Welcome back to The Dive. Valuations, rate hikes, the technology sector, a market outlook for 2022, and the companies that could possibly be x out this year are the topics that our guest will deep dive into today. He is the founder and chief executive officer of x out Capital. David Bars is joining us today. But before we bring David on, just a quick reminder to smash that subscribe button for me, please. Hey, David, welcome back to The Dive. Hey, Cassandra, thanks for having me again. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us again. Okay, so let's start with the broad market. On a price to earnings basis, many investors are concerned about valuations. Do you think valuations are going to continue to rise? Listen, I'm a long-term optimist, and my strategy is about long-term secular decline. And the way I address that dichotomy is by eliminating securities from a portfolio as opposed to focusing on the winners. But over the long term, I think valuations will continue to improve. I think stock prices will continue to go up. And I think the good companies will do well and the bad companies will do worse. And price to earnings as a measurement of valuation in and of itself is insufficient to reflect the reality of what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm, definitely. So um, we heard that Microsoft announced that they will be buying video game giant Activision Blizzard in a 68.7 billion all cash deal. However, regulators have signaled they will be far more aggressive in evaluating large acquisitions, meaning there's a chance the deal dies under government review. What impact do you think this will have on the sector or the gaming sector? Yeah, so look, there's a couple of things going on that relate to your first question. For one, Microsoft is paying or, or proposing to pay $95 a share. And I think right now, Activision stock is trading at 81. That's quite a spread for an arbitrage, uh, for arbitrage investors, right? But the reality is your question relating to regulatory approvals is probably one of the most uh, significant reasons why there's that spread. So two things to point out. One, if Microsoft's willing to pay 95 for the stock, clearly valuation metrics in the ordinary course, so going back to your price to earnings measurement, aren't that relevant. They're paying this price because they think it's it's intellectual property. And I think the Microsoft gaming executive said that on, on television, that the intellectual property is what's really a value to Microsoft. And it's hard to just put um, a ratio or some kind of other measurement on, on what that valuation really means. So I think there are many companies out there that are undervalued because no one is giving the appropriate weight to something like intellectual property. As to the regulatory approval, look, the, the Biden administration has made some pretty strong statements about their objection to large tech, and they might use this as a, an attempted poster child. But if you dig down into the weeds, what, um, what Microsoft is actually doing will improve the, the gaming uh, sector for the consumer base. And it's going to offer probably more products at a cheaper price. And ultimately, if what their uh, responsibilities are is to make sure consumers aren't going to end up getting hurt by a strategic transaction like this, they're going to have a hard time defending that against what Microsoft, I'm sure, is prepared to do. So I ultimately think this is a deal that will get done at $95 a share. And there's an, a pretty easy arbitrage opportunity out there right now for people who want to buy that stock at $81. Mm -hmm. So the majority of your top fund holdings are in the technology sector, a sector that's seen a decline as of late. Do you foresee a rotation from a focus on growth to value among investors then? Uh, as, a, as a former deep value investor, uh, I do not see such a rotation. I think even value investors are attempting to buy growth. They just like to buy it at a cheap price and therefore they call themselves value investors. I think ultimately it is about growth and owning companies that are growing as opposed to companies that are either flat or shrinking is what investors' goals should be. Again, that's what XOUT does. 
we're only focused on eliminating those companies that aren't growing as one of our measurements that we use. And this value to growth dynamic, which has been talked about for 12 years since the financial crisis, now even longer, is sort of, um, let's just call it history. It really isn't about that anymore. And, and just because the tech sector, got, tech sector got banged up a little bit for a whole bunch of extrinsic reasons, how could people not want to own some of the large mega tech companies in their portfolios today? It, it scratches my, I'm a scratching my head over that. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Okay, so are you at all concerned about this year's rate hikes maybe having a negative impact on valuations? Look, we, we obviously need to normalize the rate environment. The, the, I wish people would talk about things like intellectual property valuations as much as they talk about interest rate rises, but unfortunately, it doesn't command the same attention. And so what I'd say to you is the rate hikes are here. They're coming. Don't own fixed income instruments. It's sort of insane for anyone to want to own a fixed income instrument. Own stocks and make sure instead of trying to pick winners, you simply exclude the losers like what we do at XM. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks for the advice. Let's move on here. So this week, US telecom companies plan to launch their 5G services, but airlines have raised concerns about the possibility of it interfering with safety equipment. Do you expect this to have a negative impact on the telecos? Well, I think it's one of the many things that are unfortunately uh, negatively affecting the telecom companies. They have been perennial X outers for us, just having challenges across the board in terms of their ability to grow their businesses and keep up with the pace of the rest of the market. Even though 5G is a technology advancement, isn't it just outrageous though that everyone knew 5G was coming and the US government's agencies responsible for regulating this can't communicate with each other. It's sort of an embarrassment for the United States of America, quite frankly. And I feel bad. I actually feel bad for Verizon and AT&T who invested billions of dollars on this, announced well in advance when it was coming and our own regulated entities aren't prepared for it. So um, notwithstanding that, uh, the telecom companies unfortunately have had challenging um, times in terms of being able to grow their business, and it's why they've been X'd out by us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. It's pretty crazy. Okay, so a question we love to ask our new guests every year. What is your market outlook for 2022? Yeah, look, I, I, the first month of the year, uh, we're only 20 days into it, but it's certainly giving folks a great entry point, I believe, um, in three things. One, uh, investors will continue to buy passive indexes, and one of the best passive indexes to own is the large cap U.S. equity market. Two, not all indexes are um, are right. They buy everything in an index, so it might be better, as, you sa as I said, to avoid the losers as opposed to trying to pick the winners. And three, technological change is coming, and it's going to continue to impact the market. All of that being said, I'm a bull on the market. I'm a long-term believer and optimist. And I think what's going on in fixed income land and with interest rates rising makes it even more of a bullish case for one to own equities, especially large cap equities. And I expect 2022 to be a year in which we're up in and around 10%. And because the market's already opened so significantly down here in the first month, it's, a, it's sort of a gimme for folks. So great entry point to start coming into the market if you haven't come in already. Mm -hmm, definitely. All right, so David, one more thing before we let you go here. Are there any companies that you expect your model to X out this year? Yeah, there's some, there's some interesting things going on, some interesting dynamics uh, that we see taking shape. And um, a company like Uber, which is, uh, is a tech company, uh, you know, people consider it a, a you know, uh, uh, in the in the auto space, if you will, for lack of a better thing, but it's it's having its own struggles growing. It's been a company that's been subsidizing uh, consumers and and losing money. Uh, it it has performed poorly after some significant growth has performed poorly under our model, and is likely to get xed out. And I I think that's one that I like to highlight because I don't want folks to think that x out is pure tech. I mean, Uber is one of the leading technology businesses 
in the transportation space, and yet we're Xing it out. So um, I look for that one to have continued struggles uh, as it tries to normalize its business without subsidization. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks, Cassandra. Great to be here again. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. Thanks so much for tuning in today. We'll be back again tomorrow with the latest updates, so be sure to stay tuned by hitting that notification bell and subscribing below.